Algebra 1, 10.7c, Rational Equation Word Problem, Reciprocal of a Number. You remember what a reciprocal is, right? It's an upside-down version of the fraction, so the numerator becomes the denominator. We can write a rational equation to find the reciprocal or additive inverse of a number. So remember, the LCM is the least common multiple, the LCD is the least common denominator. When we're talking about rational expressions or equations, the LCM is the LCD. It's the same thing, okay? Also remember that exponential order means we put the exponents in order from largest to smallest to none, going all the way to the constant number like the 5 at the end, okay? All right, so here's our first problem. The reciprocal of 2 less than a certain number is twice the reciprocal of the number itself. What is the number? Okay, let's break this down, all right? We know the word is means equal. So right now, we can see that we're going to break this into two parts with the is as the equal, okay? So we're going to have this side is this side, all right? I'm going to let x be the number. Now, because we're dealing with fractions and rational expressions, we can say that this x is an x over 1, can't we? That's the same thing as x. Well, it says the reciprocal of 2 less than the number. So Let's first break this into a smaller part, even this side, okay? 2 less than a number, well, the number is x, so 2 less than the number would be x minus 2, wouldn't it? We can write that as a fraction over 1, can't we? So the reciprocal of 2 less than a number would be 1 over x minus 2. See how I got that? Just flipped it around. So 1 over x minus 2 is equals twice the reciprocal of the number. So the number is x. It can be written as x over 1. So its reciprocal is 1 over x. And we're doing twice that. So that's 2 times that. So now we have 2 times 1x on that side. So now we've got 1 over x minus 2 is equal to 2 times 1x, and we can write that over a 1 also, can't we? So we can just multiply numerators, multiply denominators. We can see that the least common denominator, because 1 times x is just an x, our least common denominator is x times x minus 2. See? When we multiply each side by that least common multiple, least common denominator. We multiply this side times x times x minus 2. And when we multiply it by 1, we just get itself, don't we? x times x minus 2. And its denominator is itself, so that goes down here. 2 times x, mi times x minus 2 becomes 2x times x minus 2, and it's just over an x, isn't it? Now we can cancel out the x minus 2 over the x minus 2 because it becomes a 1, doesn't it? We're just left with x on this side, see? And then on this one, this x cancels out this x as a 1, and we're left with 2 times x minus 2. Now we can distribute that 2. We get 2x minus 4. See? Now we need to isolate the x. So because there's a 2x on this side and an x on this side, we'll subtract 2x from this side to get that 4 by itself, and then all the x's on one side. That makes a 0 pair. There's our negative 4 on this side. And when we have, remember there's an invisible 1 here. When we have 1x and we take away 2, we get a negative 1x, don't we? Or a negative x. We don't have to put the 1, do we? So now we have negative 1x equals negative 4. And we can get rid of that negative by dividing both sides by negative 1. Because when you divide a negative by a negative, it makes a positive. So now we have x on this side. Negative 4 divided by negative 1 makes a positive. 4, our answer is 4. x equals 4. So the reciprocal of 2 less than a certain number that's twice the reciprocal of the number itself is a 4. See? And we broke it into little pieces and to figure out what it means, all right? Now, let's look at this one. This is a famous one. The additive inverse of a number divided by 12 is the same as 1 less than 3 times its reciprocal. Find the number. So, we need to break it into smaller parts for it to make sense, okay? We know that the word is is going to be the equal sign. It says, is the same as. So, that's our equal sign, is the same as. So, now this part is going to be the first part of our 
equation, and then after that is going to be the second part of our equation. So we have the additive inverse of a number divided by 12 equals 1 less than 3 times its reciprocal. All right, additive inverse and reciprocal, let's break those down, okay? If x is our number, and being fractions and rational expressions, we know we can write it as x over 1 like we did over here, right? So we have x over 1 as our number. The reciprocal of that is going to be 1 over x, isn't it? It's going to be flipped upside down. What's an additive inverse? Do you remember? It's the opposite on a number line. So the opposite of positive 5 is negative 5. See? That's the additive inverse. The opposite additive inverse of a negative 2 is a positive 2. We just flip to the other side of the 0 on the number line for the additive inverse, right? And if we add these together, a positive 5 and a negative 5, it makes a 0, doesn't it? Okay? So, now we know and remember what the additive inverse is, that it's the opposite. We need to do the additive inverse of a number divided by 12. So if our number is x, and it's a positive x, What's its additive inverse? Ah, if our number is a positive x, its additive inverse is a negative x, isn't it? And if our number is a positive x, that's x over 1, its reciprocal is 1 over x. It's flipped around, isn't it? Right? Okay, so the additive inverse of x is going to be a negative x, isn't it? Divided by 12. And remember, fractions are little division problems, so we have negative x over 12. That wasn't that bad, was it? And it's the same as, so it equals 1 less than, so it's going to be minus 1, 3 times its reciprocal. Well, if that's the number, x over 1, its reciprocal is 1x, isn't it? So we need 3 times its reciprocal of 1x minus 1. See? We broke it into little pieces. And this 3 could be written as a 3 over 1, couldn't it? So we can multiply 3 times 1 and 1 times x, can't we? So we get 3x minus 1, don't we? 3 over x minus 1. So now we're right here. And the least common denominator is going to be 12x, isn't it? Now we need to multiply each term by the LCD, not necessarily each side, if you say it is each side, but if you just say it like that, that it's each side, you might just multiply one part, one term by the 12x. We want to multiply each term by that 12x. I write it over one so I can do my numerators and then my denominators. I ended up with negative x times 12x over 12 and I get 36x over x here, and we're going to take away a negative 12 over 1, aren't we? Well, this 12 and this 12 cancels out as a 1, and we're left with negative x times x. The 36x over x cancels out to be just a 36 minus a 12x, because we can take that 1 away, can't we? So now we have negative x times x equals 36 minus 12x. That became a second degree equation, and we need to set it to 0. So remember we did in video 10.6a, second degree equations have only one variable in them, just one. It might be listed several times, like x squared plus x plus x, but there's only one variable. There's no other letter, just that one letter. And the power is 2 or less. So this fits that description. We've got one variable. It's showing up three times. There's an x there, there's an x there, there's an x there. But there's no y, there's no z, there's no a, there's no b. They're all x's, aren't they? And negative x times x is negative x squared, isn't it? So our power of x is not bigger than a 2. So it's a second degree equation. All right. Now we need to write it so that it's set to 0. And because we have negative x squared on this side, all we have to do is add an x squared to this side, and that'll set it to 0. That makes a 0 pair. And we have to add the, negative, the, the positive x squared to this side, see? And because we need to write it in exponential order, 
with our exponents going from least from largest to least, okay, we're going to write that x squared first in front of the 36. And because this is x to the first power, it's got to be next. So we have a negative 12x. Then we write the one without the, vi the variable, the constant at the end. So now we've got this trinomial x squared minus 12x plus 36. And it's written in exponential order. Now we need to factor this trinomial. So remember, we need to find something that when added together, it makes a negative 12. And when multiplied together, it makes a positive 36. Well, we can factor it as x minus 6 times x minus 6. Negative 6 and negative 6 makes negative 12. And negative 6 times negative 6 makes a positive 36, doesn't it? So that's perfect. See that? And it's set to equal 0 because it's a second degree equation. See that? So that means x minus 6 equals 0. And to isolate the x, we just add 6 to each side, don't we? That creates a 0 pair here. And we get x is equal to 6. Now all we have to do to check it is wherever there's an x in the original equation that we had, we just plug in a 6. So if it's a negative x, that means it's a negative 6 over 12. That gives us a negative half, doesn't it? 3 over a, ne a 6, because that's a positive one, 3 over 6 is a half. And if we take away one whole, that puts us on the other side of 0 on the, on the number line, to negative half, and it checked out. Negative half is equal to negative half. So if this was really, really confusing, try watching this video again because I really went through every single step, okay? Just remember to break it into small little parts. Find your is so that you know where your equal sign is, and slowly break down each of these words so that you know exactly what they're talking about like I did here in the blue, so that you know if x is the number, that its reciprocal is 1 over x, isn't it? And that's 3 times it, isn't it? And if it's divided by 12 and it's additive inverse, it's negative x over 12, right? Okay, so our next video, 10.8a, is going to be rational equations, again, and word problems, and we're going to do acid mixtures. And if you want to go back and learn about the second degree equation that we did in 10.6a, there's going to be a link in this description. And I actually have an entire algebra word problem playlist. There'll be a link to that or any of the other videos that we just recently covered. Okay? So, let's talk about some acid mixtures. I hope this was helpful. I hope you're doing okay. Just keep breaking it down into small parts, and I'll see you next video. Bye.